So what we're going to demo today is something a bit more robust. And in this case, it's a app shell styled platform. Um, and the whole system actually consists of five independently deployed or independently hosted repos. Each of these apps work standalone. They each run on their own ports. They all have their own bundles. But if I go to any of the ports that they're running on, I will see the same experience that I would expect to see if this was typical micro front end. If you think about micro front ends in general, um, some of them have this kind of a component style approach where you have a shell and a bunch of components that go into it. But if you ever hit the server that hosts the standalone component, it's usually not the entire app. And this is something that I haven't really liked about micro front ends. So what I generally want is the ability for there to be a header, a footer, and kind of this uh, interconnected navigation. The idea would be similar to how you would do something with a Kubernetes ingress. You could root to any application, and regardless of where you end up, the experience is still the same. You can still move to other apps. You don't have to rely on a single entry point like um, a typical app. So let's check out the code. So what we've got here is pretty much a dashboard. We have a order app. We have a profile app, sales app, or widgets, depending on what you compose your micro front ends of. And we have a application shell. Each of these has their own webpack build. And if we take a quick look at one of the webpack builds, it looks more or less standard. We're sharing a couple things in between. Uh, in the profile one, there's actually something a little bit more interesting I wanted to showcase. Over here, I'm actually going to be using File Loader, and I'm going to federate an image from a different server. So I've mentioned this once or twice before. Module federation is not a framework. It's not a JavaScript-only mechanism. It is a extension of Webpack. It's an interface. So using file loader to actually import an image from a different front end is a really nice example that kind of ties together the fact that we're not just dealing with javascript we're dealing with whatever webpack can process can be federated so let's go ahead and see what this looks like so what we're going to do is take a quick look at the applications shell that we've got so I've got my little bootstrap mechanism here to keep everything running in the right order. My app is pretty bare bones. It just has a shell. If we go down to the shell, we've got some React context. We have a router, viewport component, and we're kind of using Material UI all over the place. We have a couple of routes in here, and that's pretty much it. I'm taking advantage of React Lazy because it's convenient. But you'll see in some of the other applications here that I'm actually using just a standard import that looks more or less like that. The module federation mechanism doesn't require you to use a dynamic import if you don't want to, which is really, really handy for something like React Hooks. So let's have a look at some other spots in this app. If I go over here, let's say Profile. Profile has an app as well. And we're pulling the shell from this independent repo. If I go into, say, the dashboard and look at its app, same concept. But if I look at the dashboard service, you'll notice that I'm also getting the React context from the application shell. And that is pretty much the same as this, but it's a synchronous import. So this is probably one of the coolest things about this is I don't need to actually worry about promises. I can just have code in there just like that. All right, so this is what we have. 
it's a little bit more robust than some of the other demos that have been showcased. And to just kind of prove out that this application is running the same way regardless of where you are, we're going to go and look at the app running on all the ports. Seeing as I have four, five applications up and running, we're going to just check it out. So each one of them is on the dashboard page. And now let's see if I navigate somewhere. So if I go to this page, which is the orders page, that's going to come from a separate micro front end entirely. So let's just look at the network while I do this and see what happens. And there we go. So I federated in a single component here, eight kilobytes worth of code. And this is a completely separate micro front end. If I go over here and actually look at orders, we can see which port orders runs on. Orders is on 3002. So why don't we go to where orders is actually hosted and go to the page as well. Same system. It all works as one. Now let's go over to the profile page. The profile page is something new that I added. I pretty much just went online and found a GitHub repo that was kind of based on Material UI, and I pulled some of the pages off of it. So it's more or less a copy paste job, and all I really did was add the federation plugin and add one or two federated components that I actually needed to make it run. It's a little bit larger because I just cloned a repo off the internet. So it's got a lot of other styles, components, and just additional bloat that I really didn't clean up. But let's check it out anyway. We'll keep an eye on our network tab as we go over there. All right. So yeah, 90 kilobytes. It's definitely on the larger side. This is also running in development mode, so everything's really large, but it's um, a little heavier. But you'll notice that everything works. And this was, you know, a very different kind of layout to what the other apps look like. You can see there's a bunch of assets in here and other random things that, you know, I didn't really put together. So one of the other cool things is that image over there. If we go and look at it, that image is coming from port 3004. So we are federating from port 3000. We are federating firstly all the code that powers this page, but we are also federating any of the side effects, any of the other loader files that would be used. And that's pretty neat. And if we go over here, let's say to port 3002, just... so we start off on the dashboard on 3002 and the dashboard service comes from 3001 because that's actually where dashboard is. And we are getting a few federated components from 3003 because we are embedding widgets and other pieces of code here. Yeah, on this page we have three different pieces of runtime from three separate applications. So that's pretty cool. And all three of those apps are hosted on their own and they all work the same way. They all look the same way. You wouldn't know that you're moving between different micro front ends at all. We can browse just the same, go to our profile page just the same, go over here to port 3004, same deal, no matter where you go. So there was one interesting problem that I ran into. I fixed it now, but I'm gonna go ahead and break it again. So I'm gonna hop in here and just comment this out. All right, so white page. Now, if I go over here and reload it, everything still works. So this one really got me. I wasn't really sure what was going wrong. And I went over here and looked in the console. There's the service provider, and this is more or less where it falls over. Um, it actually dies off in the component that you're in. And the reason is, is we actually set the title using React Context, and this is all hosted in the app shell. So when I go down here in profile changes, it's this app that's using pretty much service provider and it's using a react hook for use context. So the problem came up 
trying to resolve this because none of the other apps behaved like this. So I was really trying to figure out what's going on. Here's more or less how, how it gets set. You know, we have use service context. If I scroll up here, you'll notice that I'm actually destructuring and pulling the React context from the remote shell slash service. And for a quick refresher, we can just go and see what shell actually exposed. Shell exposes itself in service, and that's pretty much it. So why does it not work on its own origin? Pretty much, if you're trying to use something that you're exposing, it operates a little bit differently, mostly because we haven't attached all the chunk deferrals um, into the application just yet. And with something as fragile as React Context, it's, um, it's especially quirky. So if we actually console log this, and notice I'm in a different micro front end here, and what will happen is if I go to port 3000, the application shell is gonna federate the dashboard in here. So, and we load this page again, it's going to crash. And I noticed that, you know, in dashboard service, this is undefined, which is very interesting. Obviously, I'm just trying to get the context and the context comes back undefined. But let's actually have a look at what the function is, because it says it can't find the function. And what I'm going to do is also just uh, stringify it to make sure that I'm not getting any references evaluated. So let's see if it's actually there when the render happens. Hmm. So it says it is in the console log, but if I stringify this, the function comes back undefined. So at the moment that the render happens, it's not here, even though it's supposed to be here. Over here in my app shell, I'll still import service just like this, but a nice little trick that I discovered was if I add it to shared as such, so I'm exposing it, yeah, but I also put it in shared. And this is a total workaround, but what this allows me to do is pretty much tap into the other half of Webpack where Webpack is going to wait for things like React, React DOM, you know, all of these things to either be on the page or be supplied by the host. So I was thinking, okay, well, what if I just add this in there as well? And this again really doesn't make sense. The way shared works under the hood is when I find this request or something that matches this request, there's a dependency factory. And what it does is it sees that, you know, this request matches React or it matches whatever. What I do then is I um, actually take the original module that Webpack was requiring and the dependency factory moves it over and allocates it to a different uh, reference point in the in the Webpack graph. And the original module, like where it actually was, becomes a remote module. So when you import React and you have it in shared, you're not actually importing React. You're importing remote module. Remote module works with the dependency factories and pretty much will figure out is this being overridden by the host or should I go and get it? So using the mechanics of how that works, I thought, okay, well, let me try applying it to itself. So what this kind of does under the hood is Webpack knows that it needs this to start. And I know that I need this for the app shell to run. So I pretty much tacked it onto the end there to treat it almost like vendor code where before the application boots itself, it's gonna make sure that this is resolved. Because of just how the app shell is designed here, it's not necessarily the most ideal scenario, especially with service because again, service is using you know this really fancy syntax where you can import it in a flat, uh, synchronous manner. So 
you know, it works a little bit differently. I kind of leveraged the mechanism that we're using for vendor code. And that's kind of where this whole promise bootstrap idea comes in is essentially when Webpack starts itself, the runtime is gonna start, immediately the runtime is going to execute the entry point. In this case, the entry point is index and all index is, is a, a dynamic import to bootstrap. So that gives Webpack a chance to see are any of the dependencies it needs on the page. If they're not on the page, it gets hoisted up into the nearest promise it can find. So what it ended up allowing me to do was pretty much tell Webpack that this is almost like vendor code. So instead of federating this at runtime, because I can't really wait for it, I treat it almost like shared. And before the bootstrap is actually initialized, Webpack is gonna verify that these dependencies are available. The same way common, uh, like a commons JS bundle works or um, like vendor chunks. If you ever look at your network, you'll always see it's uh, you know like main vendor chunks feature code or something like that uh, because the vendors have to be there before the app can start. So this was like a pretty easy workaround to actually resolve the bug until we close the ticket on GitHub. So it was crashing before. Now I've uncommented this again and we're gonna see if the app runs as expected. Takes a moment. Yep, yeah. so that actually fixes it. And another really interesting thing is we, we can actually see that I'm both exposing and sharing the same dependency or the same file. And it's also really neat because you can use shared to federate code but almost in an override pattern. So this is for consumers, but shared is more for overriding a remote. So this is actually a really interesting pattern that I haven't thought about until pretty much now, but you could have an application that consumes federated code, but it could also let the host override its own features. So in the case of service, imagine you've got Redux reducers, for example, or roots, or you know something arbitrary like that. You're gonna pull in a remote, and maybe that remote will connect to your Redux store, but it's kind of standalone, so it brings its own, or it will bring its own. This pattern could be used to essentially hijack that and say, when you're federating this code, you're going to forcefully override the remote's service, or you're going to forcefully override something like the app shell. Imagine you have each page encapsulated in a self-enclosed runtime that ensures the page is embeddable, it ensures the page runs, and it keeps the page kind of disconnected from the actual core app.js file. Um, but if you're going to load this inside of another application that already has a shell, um, you could use shared on both sides and pretty much override the app shell that a remote would have with your own copy of it. So this is really, really interesting. I think this will lead to some very, very interesting interleaved applications. So anyway, that's how I ended up fixing it. Let's also just see what's, what's the total payload size that we're gonna download here. Uh, so I'm going to kind of ignore this because I'm in dev mode and I'm pulling in some pretty large dependencies. In general, when we do shared code right now, we're not turning on tree shaking, but we have that in the backlog and I'm pretty sure before we release it, we're going to enable tree shaking. So you'll actually be able to federate vendor code and still have it tree shaken. So you won't have to say, choose between, you know, sharing material UI icons at 12 megs or having to have duplicate copies of it that could be tree shaken. The idea will be that they're all tree shaken and if, if the host doesn't have exports that the remote needs, the remote will load its own tree shaken copies or its own fragments of those exports 
So that's kind of interesting to think about is um, still supporting tree shaking and having this kind of distributed vendor code architecture. So I'm going to kind of ignore this first page load because it's not really helpful to the point I'm trying to make. I want to know once I'm on a single page app and you probably know how big your single page app is. Typical micro front ends probably like two, three megs of JavaScript. If it's really big, maybe five megs, typical size. So what's the cost? to download additional micro front end parts in total. So if I browse from pretty much the dashboard through two pages, what's the total resource size that I'm gonna download? All right, eight kilobytes for that. And that one was a little bit larger, but that's because my image is huge. So we'll filter out JavaScript. 146 kilobytes. That's not bad. Considering that I just moved between three independent, well, actually four independently deployed front end applications, and for me to switch applications, the only additional payload that I had to download to move through, let's see, yeah, to move through two different origins was 146 kilobytes. And these are all standalone React applications, like, like I've shown over here. So the fact that I'm able to browse with what's essentially a code split-like system is pretty neat. For me, the typical way this would look if uh, we didn't have module federation would be probably four megs per app. So moving through these three applications is gonna be 10 megs or so, eight megs. And that's pretty large. I, the only thing I cared about on these two pages was 146 kilobytes. But you'll end up downloading two to three megs because you need what essentially the dashboard page already was providing. So that's really the cool concept of module federation. This is the seamlessness that I've been after for a really long time. Like This is what I want it to do. I want three apps, no matter where you are, no matter what you load it on, I want it to be a single page app. I don't care about anything else. I should go to any point, any port, any domain, any path, and it should never not be a single page application. I think this is probably actually our largest page. So let's look at the payload to download the dashboard. Yeah, React Charts. That's definitely big, especially in dev mode. It's less than 100 kilobytes if we excluded the charting system. And if we tree shake the charting system, or at least minimize it, the number is going to be pretty small. And this is, you know, coming from, let's see, I'm on port 3002. So this is coming from, well, let's see, where is it? So this is coming from 3002. That's coming from a separate micro front end. That's coming from another micro front end. So is that, so is that, and so is that. So we have, you know, two or three different origins here. And the total cost to download this was 1.6 megs. If we exclude charts or optimize charts, you're looking at almost no payload to download this stuff. So that's the, like, this is what makes module federation cool. This stuff just works.